Hey, what's up guys? Imran here, Monster Gadgets. I hope you're all having a wonderful day wherever you might be. Thank you so much for joining me. And in today's video, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the brand new, well, my brand new, Uniden R7 Reality Detector. I'm gonna go ahead and unbox this, go set it up in my 21 Tesla Model 3 Performance, drive around with it, do some tests, and uh, see how well this thing works. So let's go ahead and dive into it. All right guys, welcome back. So for those of you that might be new to my channel, all my videos are primarily timestamped. So if you wanna to skip to one section of the video, feel free, just follow the bar in the bottom there, see what sparks your interest and just get to the point to what you wanna see. But let's go ahead and get started. So here is the box that R7 comes in. This is the front of it. Uh, they did come out with a new processor and that uh, the R7s have now just because of uh, supply chain shortages. So this is going to be a little bit faster processor and a different uh, firmware update than the previous R7. So as far as performance goes, based on the research that I've done, there's really not a huge difference as far as performance, but the processor itself is 50% faster. Again, for supply chain issues, they came out with a new one. All right, so in here it tells you all the different features. I'm not going to go into all that right now. The site has some disclosure, disclaimers, the back gives you a nice view of what's all included, the radar detector, the suction bracket, the single suction bracket, the carrying case, and the hard shell uh, case as well. So uh, that's that. Let me go ahead and uh, open this up. And as we open the box here, we are greeted with some user manuals. Uh, put that aside. Here's the case that it comes in and that is all for the box. So again this is a nice hard case. This is what it comes in. Big unit in. Branding the front. The back's got uh, some of these on here to make it look more rugged I guess. But let's go ahead and unzip this. We've got the single suction. The carrying case, which has a radar detector in it. The power cable. USB cable for firmware updates to hook that up to your computer. And the two point uh, bracket. Put that aside. Put those aside. And we'll get to the power cable and stuff in a second here. Velcro pouch. And then here is... Oh, this is a lot lighter than I thought it would be, which is kind of nice. Uh, here is the actual radar detector itself. Let me give you a front angle view here. That's the front. Then we've got the top. A few buttons there with menu, minus, plus, power on. And then this is where the bracket goes in to put it in. The side's got a couple buttons, mark and dim. And then this side, it's got that USB connection, hook it up to your computer. And then that's where the power cable goes in right there. Back is that force sensor itself. Let's go ahead and uh, peel this uh, off real quick here. Get that in. Oh, did I just break it? No, oh, it ripped off. So let's try that again. Let's use overhead cam for that, shall we? Since I'm having difficulties with it. There's that. For those of you, actually, none of you will probably know. You might have seen in my other videos. I am actually coming from, don't laugh about this, a Beltronix 995 radar detector. So this... I've had for, I think, eight years or something like that. It's done really well. It's saved me from a lot of trouble that I could have gotten into. Um, so this is my upgrade. So I'm coming from the 995 and upgrading to, of course, the R7. So FYI. All right. Uh, this looks pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and put this on the side here with the case. 
let's take a look at the power cable. Um, so I am probably going to have this hardwire into my car. For the time being, I'm going to go ahead and show you just how I'm going to place it normally with what, what it came with. But ultimately, I'm going to try to get it hardwired so I don't have this cable running around the front there. So the cigarette lighter has got a mute button here, uh, USB uh, cable uh, that you can go ahead and attach there. So that way you've got uh, an accessory you can plug in. Here's what this looks like. And then you've got your normal power cable that you plug into the R7 on the side here, like that. All right, so that is the unboxing of it. Um, let me go ahead and actually go set it up in my car now. Let's do that. All right, guys, so here we are in my Model 3. I've got the R7 here. I'm gonna use the single point mount and then I've got my power source, which is gonna right now go to the cigarette lighter, but sooner or later, I'm gonna get this hardwired so that way the cable is not hanging down here. So uh, let me go ahead and take a look at where I probably want this, like somewhere here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this clip in, which is then going to slide in just like this, basically. That is in there. Uh, before I peel this off, I'm gonna go ahead and line up where I want this to be, but most likely, somewhere around here just because it's got the mark and the mute button on the side and I'm going to be able to easily access it. So the higher that I can get it, the better in my opinion. That way it's a bit more hidden and not visible from the outside. So I'm going to try to put it like right here. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, take this off. And then uh, let's see. I should probably leave a little bit of space just for the sake of, I should do this. I don't know, this is going to do a suction, it's going to stay on there. So, I'm thinking like right there, that way there's a little bit of gap here, so it's not going to hit it or anything like that once the car moves. It is straight, I'm going to go ahead and put this on here, clip on just like that, and then I've got this secured. All right, let me go ahead and put the power cable in. I'm gonna run this from on top of my rear view mirror. And this is gonna get plugged into the cigarette lighter, which is in the armrest there. So this, you can actually move. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take this off for a second and uh, if I wanted to I could just loosen this a little bit, put it up and then tighten it and then I can go ahead and put this back on because it was coming down just this tad bit. There you go, that's a little bit better. All right, so that is actual hookup. Again, this line itself, I don't like it here, but once I do get this hardwired, then uh, this cable will be gone and it will be a nice clean uh, install without having this cable hanging. But for the time being, this will have to do. I'm gonna go ahead and play around with some of the settings, get familiar with it, and then of course, I'll share that uh, with you guys once I learn more about this. So more to come. All right guys, here I am back in the car. It's been a week since I installed this. I still have the, the cable running to it, but I will get this hardwired uh, relatively soon here. But I wanted to cover some of the features that I absolutely love about this reality detector. Uh, number one is the screen itself. You can go ahead and change the display to whatever color you want. Uh, with me, of course, having the Tesla Model 3 Performance with the white interior, I went ahead and changed the color to white. Um, second feature I love about this is you can actually have the display here uh, show how fast you're going, so your speed limit as well as your compass, uh, or you can have that to one or the other, or um, you can basically customize it to what you like, which is a really cool feature. For me, uh, I like to have both the speed as well as the compass on there along with the time uh, showing here. And then of course, that's a mode that is currently in city. Uh, you can go ahead and turn that to highway or advanced different functionality depending on what you're looking for. 
Um, now, the more the main core features that I will say I absolutely love about this is for the fact that there's a couple things you can do from a, a threat standpoint. So you can leave it on basic mode, which will indicate uh, the highest level of threat. So if you're getting a K band, K A band, X band, whatever it might be, it'll just go ahead and display that. Or you can go ahead and turn on all threats, which means the main threat will actually show up on the display here, but it'll show up to three additional threats there, meaning you've got the strongest signal being displayed here, and then you've got up to three other uh, threats. So it could be, you know, for example, KA band as the main threat, and then you've got maybe an X band or K band. It'll actually show all three of those on there. Uh, so it's actually capturing four threats altogether compared to just one, which your typical radar detector would have. So in my opinion, that is an absolute great feature to have that way you are covering all in all threats and it's telling you which way it's coming from and which band it actually is so that's pretty cool the other feature i love about this is the night mode or dark mode which is what i currently have it set on so depending on uh how bright it is outside so right now you guys can see i'm actually outside during the day so it's bright i've got the display on which actually turns on by itself so when it gets dark uh, it'll go ahead and go into dark mode which will indicate a small little dot kind of moving around showing you that the radar detector is on but the display would come on once it actually detects a threat of some sort so if it's got a k-band whatever threat it's, it's it's capturing it'll go ahead and turn the display on while that threat is active and then it'll go ahead and go back into dark mode once that threat is gone so that way at night when you're driving and it's dark outside you're not uh, being bothered by the actual display because it's off that's the setting that I like to have it on. You can go ahead and change it to whatever you like. You can have it on bright, you can have it on dim, you can have it on dimmer, or you can have it on night mode. Again, that's the mode that I currently am running. The most important feature in my opinion probably is the false alert and how well this thing actually mutes them. So you have a couple different options. You've got a button on the side here that says mute, uh, mute on or mark. And so what you can do is while you're driving and you notice, for example, if you are in a parking lot with a bunch of stores and this thing goes off, you can go and hit the mute button one time. It'll go ahead and mute the radar detector or you can go ahead and hit the button twice and it'll actually capture that into its memory where next time you are driving the area, it will not alert you uh, audibly. It'll still alert you on the actual screen itself, but just won't make a sound, which in my opinion is pretty cool. So you can do it manually. Uh, the second thing is, of course, this has a GPS built into it. So if you drive through it multiple times, it'll go ahead and auto mute and it'll tell you with an indicator on the top right hand side here where it'll tell you it is a uh, mute memory. So it'll, because GPS is enabled, it'll go ahead and mute that by itself automatically knowing that it is a false alert versus an actual threat uh, because you're going through it multiple times and it's smart enough to know to mute that automatically. But in case you wanna go ahead and mute it yourself, you've got access to that button right there and you can go ahead and mute it. So as far as just speaking of false alerts, um, I personally have not noticed a whole lot uh, of false alerts being picked up. It will of course pick up uh, the automatic door sensors, some of the Hondas and Acuras and things like that. It'll pick up some of those, but for me, I much rather have that band on than off. That way I'm not, um, you know, putting myself in danger because in my area they do run some some K bands to, uh, to monitor speeds and things like that. So I leave it on. But false alerts in regards to shopping centers and things like that while you're driving by, because this has such great range, that I have noticed any issues with because it'll automatically go ahead and mute it or it'll go ahead and not even pick it up because the signal is so low. So you can go ahead and play around with your settings on that to see if you want it on and off and then what frequencies you wanted to capture. Um, I believe as a standard, it's got plus or minus five as a default setting. But again, you can go ahead and go into your settings and play around with that. So uh, those are probably the top features that I wanted to cover with this radar detector. Outside of it, of course, having extreme range which in my opinion is awesome. Um, I've seen couple KA bands uh, that alerted me probably a good two miles away, if not more. And uh, unfortunately I didn't capture that on video, but I've only had this for a week and I've only had those two times where I've noticed those KA bands being captured at a relatively extreme distance. So, so far I'm extremely happy with it. Of course, I will continue to update you guys uh, as I find out more or come across more incidences on my Twitter. So if you're not following me on Twitter, make sure you go do that. And uh, hopefully you guys found this video to be helpful. If you did, make sure you give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.